Let's take a quick walkthrough of the features available to pro subscribers in PhotoFamous Web. We'll start off looking at some of the map features. Uh, here at the top left, I can click to view the available uh, default map styles. The first three you get without a pro subscription, but all of these additional ones here down below, uh, you, you will have available once, once you subscribe. Let's have a quick look through those. First of all, we've got open topo map. We're looking at Hong Kong, it's a great location for this. It has a good mixture of transportation and interesting terrain and topography to look at. Open Topo Map focuses on topography with quite a lot of detail in there. See the outdoor style, um, gives a somewhat cleaner view of that. Here, I'll move this out of the way just to let you see the map styles there. The landscape style is another uh, topographic map style, but with still plenty of transport details. Transport, as you'd expect, focuses on the transportation links, of which there are many and varied sorts in Hong Kong. Transport Dark shows you that on a darker map style. Um, good if you like night mode, I guess. Mobile Atlas uh, gives you a nice high contrast uh, view of the map. So those are the additional styles you get by default. You also have the option to come here and switch over to using Google Maps, so let me do that. I switch to Google and you get uh, four different fundamental styles here. First of all, you get the terrain view. I can toggle that off and get just the plain street view. Put that back on so you see the difference there and off again. And probably most importantly for many of you, the satellite view, which you can have with or without the map labels. So that's uh, the four different, or three and a half different Google Map styles, uh, map, terrain, and, and satellite. In addition to that, we've got access to Google Street View directly within the app. So I can drag the little man here, drop him. Let's try somewhere here. And there's a nice view of the, the harbor from a yacht. Looking at the island there. So this is a nice way to check out the local uh, view on the ground using Street View directly within Photo Ephemeris. Those are the map features. Let's talk next about some of the navigation features. First of all, we'll look at the elevation um, services. Up here you see uh, for the primary map pin location it shows you the elevation above sea level. It's dropped on the sea, so as you'd expect it's showing zero degrees. Let's go somewhere a little bit more interesting. I'm going to go to Long's Peak here in Colorado. And I will use a terrain view for this and zoom in slightly. This is one of the 14,000 foot high mountains, the 14ers here in Colorado. And uh, Long's Peak is uh, shown here by Google Google's elevation service as 14,250 feet. If you look at the signpost, which is down here on the road to the right, it's listed as 14,256, so that is very, very close. With the alternative sources, SRTM3, this is the shuttle radar, radar topography mission, um, you get different values, significantly less, that's not super accurate. SRTM1 is better, it's actually a slight overestimate of the height. Um, Aster is close-ish, not great, and GTOPO 30, that's really only for use in the far um, north Arctic or Antarctic um, uh, latitudes where there's no other coverage available, and that is tends to be less accurate and you wouldn't use it in mid-moderate latitudes. So Google is often the best. You can use the Google Elevation Service in conjunction with Google Map. Um, otherwise, uh, if you're on the default map, you can choose any of of those four. Um, let's come back to the top of the map there. There we go. Um, second, if you are using a magnetic compass in the field and your compass doesn't have an, an adjustment for magnetic declination, that's the offset between true north and magnetic north, uh, you can get the app to do that for you. There are many compasses out there that don't do that and some folks prefer to use them that way. A um, good example is the Sunto Tandem, which is a, a higher end, high quality field compass and inclinometer instrument, often used by location scouts um, or cinematographers in the, in the field, uh, I am told. Um, here I'm going to enable magnetic declination. And what you'll see is that right now the sun is 
for this selected date and time and location. The sun is at a azimuth of 254 degrees, 255 degrees, uh, just for magnetic declination. And relative to true north, that is uh, 246 degrees. Uh, sorry, relative to magnetic north, I mean. And here the declination for this date and time and location is shown up here, 8.34 degrees. That is calculated um, for the date and for the, the pin position using the world magnetic model for the years 2020 to 2025. So that is magnetic azimuth, uh, magnetic north adjustment. Search features next. With the uh, Pro subscription, you can get search features as you type. So I'm going to go back to some of my favorite spots in Northumberland. And you can see that as I'm typing there, it is uh, adjusting the results. If I keep going and I'll type, let's have a look, Bamborough WA. Now I'm getting Bamborough Way somewhere in Ontario and so forth. So that's search results as you type. That can make search quite a bit quicker to use. You can also copy and paste coordinates into this field. And here's, for example, Google's very good with coordinates of mountain summits. Um, so I can copy and paste uh, summit of K2, come back here, paste it there. And it parses the coordinates, so we can go directly there using that. But it also says, what is this coordinate uh, close to? Um, so it'll do a reverse lookup for the coordinate to give you the place name and also gives you the, the uh, three word address. So that is a reverse geocoding for coordinate entry. Next, let's talk about some of the 3D and visual search features within the app. So I'll come to the sphere page. Uh, it comprises two parts. One is the 3D sphere representation here, which shows you the sun and the moon. Um, and on the right here, the visual search user interface, which was a, a recent addition. Um, now, the, 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 the 3D sphere is available to uh, users without a pro subscription. But if you subscribe, then there are a couple of things you can add into this, which are very useful for night photography. First is the galactic center. So let's look at that. I enable that, come back here. And now you'll see that the band of the Milky Way is shown in the sphere. This extra gray track here is the um, path of the galactic center, the most photogenic part of the Milky Way. And you can see that as I adjust the timeline here, it tracks across the southern sky. If we watch, uh, the, the sun is below the horizon. So this is that little window of opportunity here where the sun is well below the horizon and the galactic center is still above the horizon. Um, so you can get a good a good sense of, uh, of where that is uh, over time um, using this representation here. The the other piece that you see is the the arch of the of the Milky Way, which is uh, you see that uh, tracks around um, sometimes hard to know intuitively exactly how that's going to move over the course of time. So this is a nice way to visualize that. And you're, you're viewing this, the, the, the red pin, the primary pin is at the center of the disk there. That corresponds to the position you have selected on, on the map. Um, second, uh, meteor showers. I'm going to add those in. Save those. Come back here, sphere. And now you can see that we've got a couple of extra things showing up, for example. And what you see here is going to depend on the selected date. So I'm here in, in October and you can see that the, uh, the southern, let me just adjust that so we can read it. There we are. The southern torrids um, peak on the 29th and the Orionids on the 20th of October. And as I adjust that, you can see that the Orionids are coming up and this gives you a sense, that little graphic with the, the, the sort of the um, emerg meteors emerging from the center point. It shows the radiant point of the meteor shower. And that's the area where you would focus your camera if you were taking a series of uh, long exposure shots, capture as many meteors as you can over a few hours, and then composite them together. And you wanted to have in the shot the location in the sky from which the meteors 
um, appear to emerge, that's what this is showing you. Um, and this changes over time, uh, changes day by day. It also changes over the course of several days if it's a, a one of those showers that, that is active for a good long time, like the, the Perseids. Um, and that reflects uh, the what's called the radiant drift. That's the drift of the radiant point over time. Um, so you'll see that uh, adjust here as well. So that's uh, meteors. I'm going to turn the meteors off again, and then we'll talk about um, visual search. Uh, again, visual search is available to all users, but um, if you are a pro subscriber, um, you get to use it not only for the sun, but also for the moon and the galactic center. So let's use this with, with the moon. What is visual search? Why do you care about it? Well, let's come back to the map and I'll give you an example. Let us say that um, we want to shoot, it's not necessarily the best photographic idea, but it's, it's, um, it's something you could do. Uh, we're going to photograph the summit of Long's Peak from the side of the road here, and we would like to see a moon sat basically directly above it. Um, visual search lets you do that. It says, when can I see the moon in a particular position in the sky or a particular area of the sky? So we pop back here. A couple of things have happened. One is um, I'm using the geodetics function. So that basically gives you point to point navigation information. You can see the distance is four miles at a bearing of 253 degrees significant change in elevation. And this is the key thing, the elevation angle. So essentially we want the moon to be at that angle and at this azimuth, or this altitude to this azimuth. And so we can do that. Um, what I'll do is I'm gonna click use geodetics. And what you'll see there, if I adjust the camera, is that our little target zone, which is this semi-transparent blue area, has been adjusted to match um, basically surround, if you will, the, the target area of the pin. So what this will do, and I'm going to choose to do this over let's say, a couple of years. Let's search. And we get a whole bunch of different times when we can see the moon here. Let's choose this one. This little spark line shows you um, that it, this is going right through the middle of our target zone. And there is the moon, um, November the 12th of this year. Um, unfortunately, it's in the middle of the afternoon, so that's not necessarily the best time to, to get an interesting shot of the moon. So one of the things you can then do is apply some filters. We can say, well, we'd like this to be happening during civil twilight. Um, and let's say we'd like it to be a full moon. So you can apply these little presets. You can adjust the manual if you want, apply there. And we still get three results when we can do that. Uh, next March looks like a, a, a really good chance. There we are. There is a full moon um, during twilight. So it's a, it's a full moon, so it's setting because this is in the west. Uh, just after full moon, I suspect. Um, and um, it is right where we want it in the sky. So that is visual search um, with the moon. Um, very useful for... Uh, anybody who's planning a, a, a shot with a particular alignment of the sun or the moon or the galactic center over an object in, in the landscape. So that's a quick walk through the pro features of TPE. We covered map, we covered uh, the, the, the additional map styles, Google Maps. There's one more little thing I forgot to show you. I'm going to come back to show you that now. And that is... Uh, Pro subscribers can also use the uh, light pollution overlay, which for night photography is, is great. And there it is. You can see that Long's Peak is getting better than here in Boulder and Longmont in the Front Range, but there's even darker skies available the further west you go. Um, so for night photographers, moon photographers, um, Pro has got a lot of really, really great, useful features. Uh, we hope you like it. Um, please send us your suggestions and comments. And thanks for watching.